Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. It seems the wipe is upon us once again after weeks of speculation and doubt, so in this video I have a collection of tips aimed at helping you to get a head start and make some solid progress on your fresh level 1 characters. I just finished a fresh standard account playthrough before making this video, and these habits absolutely helped me progress at a pretty good pace through the early and the mid game. Everything in Tarkov is subject to change without notice, so I'm trying to keep these tips as general as possible so that they apply to everyone. There is no magical solution to making Tarkov easier, but these tips should help you progress at a good pace and keep your economy in a good spot so you aren't struggling too hard for money. Just a little disclaimer before we get started though, the background gameplay in this video is from the pre-wipe events, so with that being said, let's cut this intro short and get right into it. First up for this video is just a really quick tip on how you can recover a little bit of a reward for your deaths and injuries so it's not just a complete loss every single time you get taken out. This is kind of common knowledge for most Tarkov veterans, but new players might not know that you can actually get a lot of experience points for healing yourself after a raid instead of paying therapists to patch you up instead. You can get hundreds of experience points for each time that you heal yourself like this, so it's especially helpful early on when you don't need too much experience for each level. This is most effective with a Grizzly medical kit because you can use it 4 or 5 times to heal yourself up to full, but really any spare meds that you have lying around will work just as well. You can find Grizzlies pretty often by searching medical loot areas on Customs, Shoreline, and Interchange though, and I always like to have a Grizzly in my stash for this purpose. Next up is another quick tip to unlock useful healing items early on. Once you reach level 4, immediately accept Therapist's Sanitary Standards quests and find her gas analyzers as soon as possible to unlock the car medkit. Early on you'll be stuck with AI2s and bandages for healing, and the car medkit is both more convenient and much more cost effective so you want to unlock it immediately. Gas analyzers are easiest to find in filing cabinets on any map, toolboxes, tech stores on interchange, or tech crates on customs, reserves, or woods. So search those early on and get this quest done as soon as possible. On top of this, you can also trade 3 nippers to Jaeger early on for a surgical kit so you can fix black limbs in the raid, which is a pretty huge bonus when you're low level. Following up from the last tip, filing cabinets are not just good for gas analyzers, they actually hold a lot of good quest and hideout items. Most notably, they have a good spawn chance of the secure flash drive needed for skier and jaeger quests. After you get to the mid game, these filing cabinets aren't super useful, but in the beginning you should always loot cabinets for the flash drives and gas analyzers. The next tip is one of my favorites in the early game, because keys are the most important items in the game, and this is the easiest way to get them, as long as you have a bit of luck. Jackets are among the best slot machines to roll in Tarkov because of the sheer value and usefulness of some keys in the game. You can either sell them for big money on the market, use them to unlock loot for yourself, and some of them are needed for very important quests later on. Jackets can spawn almost any key in the game, so anytime you see a jacket, search it and be ready to toss those keys into your container. Another early game looting tip is to get familiar with where hidden stashes are on the maps that you play regularly and getting in the habit of checking them every time you go past them. Hidden stashes can spawn almost anything in the game, and sometimes you can get millions of rubles just from a quick little stash run. There's detailed maps showing all of these stashes on the wiki pages for each map, so check them out and loot those stashes. Another seriously amazing source of money and supplies early on that I find many players ignore are the small black and yellow toolboxes that you can find almost everywhere in Tarkov. During the early game, technical supplies for your hideout and quests are worth huge money because everyone is all trying to get their hideouts built at the same time. These toolboxes spawn almost everything you need to build your first few levels of the hideout, so search these and either keep the stuff for your own upgrades or flip it on the market at level 10 to get huge money and build yourself loadouts. The next tip is kind of an obvious one, but also extremely helpful. You want to hoard as many quest items needed for future quests as possible, so you can turn them in immediately when you unlock the quest. When you don't need something immediately, it can be really tempting to just skip it and pick something else up, but if you need them later on, it's always better to hold onto them if possible. Some key examples include cigarettes and computer parts for Mechanic, flash drives for Skier, beef stew and croutons for Jaeger, 60 round AK mags and face masks for Proper, parts for the Gunsmith quest, and really any technical item that you'll need for the hideout. Some 
other really important items to hoard are things like dry fuel, paracord, propane, and fuel conditioners needed to trade for the Red Rebel and the sick case from Jaeger later on. It's easiest to do this with a scav junk box for storage, but even if you have to litter your stash with junk, it's going to be very helpful to you later. Over the last few patches, the hideout has become an absolute gold mine for helping you complete quests through crafting items that are otherwise annoying to find when you need them. Because of this, I suggest upgrading to at least level 1 and preferably level 2 on the workbench, lavatory, and medical station as soon as possible so that you can craft quest items whenever you need them. The other hideout modules are pretty useful in their own way, but the workbench, lavatory, and med station are by far the most useful for crafting quest items and saving you time. The next tip I have for you is that you should start Mechanic's Gunsmith questline as early as possible when you hit level 2, and complete them whenever you have a chance, because they give you a lot of experience and money that is really helpful. You can find the builds for each of these quests on the wiki, so I suggest getting familiar with them before you complete the quest. A common mistake that I see many players make is that they ignore these quests, or they spend way too much money completing these quests, both of which are not ideal for your progression. The devs have added a ton of barter trades for the specific parts you need for these builds, so when you start doing the quests, make sure you check for these barter trades for the really expensive parts. You do not need to pay 500,000 rubles for a pistol grip on most of these quests to get it done. Just check the wiki, find the barter you need, and rake in the easy experience. In my opinion, unlocking Peacekeeper's questline as early as possible is a real power move in the early to mid game progression. Peacekeeper's quests are largely simple fetch quests. They award tons of experience and very useful rewards, and to top it all off, unlocking Peacekeeper level 3 is one of the biggest single power spikes in the entire game because of how many good items he sells. To get there, you need to complete Skier's questline up to Friend from the West Part 2, and then he'll introduce you to Peacekeeper. It's not easy, but unlocking Peacekeeper's quest is a huge benefit to your playthrough, so give it a solid effort. On the same theme as the last tip, you should also complete Mechanic's Introduction quest early on at level 2 so you can unlock Jaeger and get his beginning quests activated early. Jaeger is everyone's least favorite quest giver, but especially on Standard Edition accounts, you need to start getting his reputation up immediately or you're going to get locked out of a lot of things later on. I hate his entire quest chain just as much as you do, but he has some really important late game items and is required for hideout progression on some really important things, so you actually need to suck it up and get him level 2 or level 3 as soon as possible. Most players should know that good ammo is the most important part of your loadout, and when you're low level you have to search far and wide for this good ammo and use it wisely. Probably the best way to get decent ammo at low levels is to play reserve, woods, or customs and search around the camps for the cardboard boxes of 545 BT, BP, BS, and 7N39 ammo, which are actually surprisingly easy to find laying around. Once you know where to look, you can sometimes get 400 or more rounds of BT ammo out of a single raid, which will last you a while if you use it wisely. Another underrated tip is to unload one round from scav mags to check what they're running. You'll be surprised how often you'll get things like 545BT or 556M855A1 out of scav mags, which you can then use against other players or sell for big profits. I'm not much of a scav player after the early game, but after a fresh wipe I swear by my scav runs to load up my stash with basic equipment like rifles, chest rigs, basic armor, and medical supplies that scavs spawn with. You can use your scav as a high risk free run to some loot zones, but early on I tend to just creep around and try to pick up scraps. My goal is to just get out alive with some supplies for my PMC, not to have a huge banger of a raid. My perfect scenario with the scav early on is to extract with two shitty rifles, a pistol, some cheap armor, and a few backpacks stacked inside each other, which will then let me run at least two cheap loadouts on my PMC to make some quest progress. After the 12.11 patch and the wipe, weapon malfunctions are going to become a reality in Tarkov. So if you have a trusty old rifle that you've taken out on a lot of raids, check its durability regularly and keep it above 50% durability at the very least. As of making this video, we don't actually know the specifics of the system, but I'm going to use 50% as my initial point of no return and will be repairing my weapons at 50% religiously. 
Another tip related to weapon management is that you can double your storage space by taking off the mag and pistol grip while a weapon is in your stash. It actually amazes me how few people do this because it makes your stash management so much easier with the extra space. Just make sure that you keep track of those pistol grips for when you need to add them back to the weapon. For my final tip to wrap up this video, I have kind of a cliche piece of advice. Take it slow, don't be in a rush for no reason, and remember that there are things to do in Tarkov besides just turning your brain off and rushing quest locations. Literally everyone is going to be desperately scrambling to get quests done early on, which creates so much chaos and traffic that it can be really frustrating to get anywhere that you actually need to go. Sometimes the best solution to this problem is to cool your jets, slow it down, and do something else for a bit. That could mean playing a different map to just farm some loot and experience, or it could mean simply playing your quest a little bit slower. Loot around the outskirts for 10 minutes and let everyone else die at the quest location before you move in to complete it more methodically. Tarkov is a game that often rewards the tortoise more generously than the hare. That's always been my mindset for this game, and it has never stopped working out for me. There's more to the game than holding the W key and sprinting to a quest location, and I think a lot of the frustration that people experience in Tarkov can honestly be mitigated by just slowing down your pace a little bit and avoiding the traffic jams created by everyone else who is just too impatient and rushing the same spot all at the same time. No, this won't give you a 100% success rate, but I'm willing to bet cold hard rubles that the average player will have more success if they can just avoid having pure tunnel vision on quest areas. Well, that covers it for this first video on my advice to help you out after a fresh wipe. I hope it was helpful to you, and let me know down in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing more videos like this, full of sort of general advice to help your progression. I've been thinking about making something like this full of quick questing tips specific to each trader, but let me know what you specifically would like some tips for. Of course, I'll also be putting out weapon builds, loadouts, loot runs, and other guides for this wipe, so stay tuned to the channel for that content. Thanks for checking out the video. I've got links to my Twitch stream, Discord server, and Patreon page down below for anyone interested. And until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.